Hi, this is Jason with PTCI, and uh, welcome to our first virtual streaming workshop. Um, had a few glitches, so we're a couple minutes late getting going. Uh, please feel free to send in your questions, uh, either in the chat on Facebook or on uh, our YouTube channel as well. And we'll try to keep up with that. But uh, as we mentioned, this is our first time. So we may have a few glitches in there. We'll try to get to everybody and answer them as best we can. Okay. Well, the platform that we're using right now is Roku TV. This is a uh, TV that has it built into it. has the Roku stick built into it. So the software is inside the TV. You don't have to add one to it. And uh, if you do buy a Roku stick, all you really have to have to make it work on your TV is have to have an HDMI plug. And if you do have that, you know, most TVs do, any kind of flat screen does. Um, so you can use that. There's other versions uh, uh, to stream TV. You can use an Amazon Fire Stick. You can use uh, Google Chromecast, or you can use Apple TV, and uh, they're all relatively the same with some slight differences. Uh, this is the home page for a Roku TV. If you're maybe new to a smartphone, you'll notice that the screen looks a lot like uh, the screen on your phone. Your TV is going to have, uh, Roku is going to have apps uh, that you can use just like on your phone, you're going to have apps. Um, the ones we're going to look at today, this across the top row, you see YouTube TV, AT&T TV now, and Sling. These are the cable replacement apps that we'll talk about. There are some others out there. Uh, there's Fubo TV, AT&T TV now, as I mentioned, uh, Philo, and Hulu with Live TV. Those are kind of the main ones uh, that are out there. But... Part of the reason that we're starting to show people this is as we're getting out of TV, it's also a way that you can save money. Because um, uh, one of the biggest complaints that we've had when it came to our cable system was the cost. Well, you can, what we figured out is you can save about $1,000 a year uh, by switching over to a cable replacement app by streaming your TV. And so if you already have, if you already have an internet connection of a, a minimum of a 20 meg connection from us, uh, you should be able to stream depending on the amount of devices that you do use. Uh, the first one we'll look at today is you'll notice on the screen I've got home highlighted over here. We're going to move the arrow over and now you see that YouTube TV is highlighted. Now, if if you haven't ever seen this before, remember that YouTube TV and YouTube are two different things. Uh, YouTube TV is a product of YouTube, but it does, one, uh, it's like regular just YouTube. That's where we stream live ball games, uh, local high school games, or you know just anybody out there can have a channel uh, for that, and there's all kinds of content there. Whereas YouTube TV, is a cable replacement app. You see I've got the little white line around it now and I'm going to hit the OK button on the Roku remote and that will take us into this app. Now YouTube TV has over 70 channels and it costs right at $50 a month even with tax it's still under 55. When it first comes up you can see that where the word in the middle home is highlighted and what it does is it kind of bases it off of what you've watched in the past on here. The first line says top picks for you. It knows from the shows that have been watched on this, uh, this particular TV and on this system that we have set up to, to do these uh, streaming workshops what has been watched the most. Uh, right above it you see it says Sports Center. That means in the background you can kind of see a show playing that's what is on right now. I can click OK and it would take me right to that. 
Also on home, I can look down here and there's different genres, categories, movies, shows, comedy, drama, sitcoms, and I can click on any of these and it can take me in so that I can see um, any particular category. If I click on drama here, it's going to have different shows and movies that fit into that category. It even has it broke down above where you can go into uh, a little more particular. If you like dramas, but you want to look at just movies, I can hit here and it'll take me to movies that fit into that drama category that are available. I just hit the back arrow to back my way back out to the home menu. I can also go below here and you'll see resume watching. These are shows where we have watched part of the way and then paused it and we can go back here and and just uh, start it right back up right away. It also has a list of shows that are popular right now and other things you can add to your categories. It's also got just different categories, sports and family below. Now if we go back up to the top and we move to the right of home over to live, this is your guide. You're going to see your time across the top and your channels are going to be on the far side over here. It's going to list channels right there. Now one thing you'll notice different about this from regular TV is you're not going to have uh, a channel number. You're not going to turn to channel 72 or whatever. It's just going to show uh, the name of the channel there. And then across the top, like I said, it says 2 p.m., 3 p.m. If I click down here and highlight a channel, it shows me how many minutes are left in this show, what it's rated, and what time it starts. But I can click, simply click over and go later in the day. And let's say I wanted to uh, record this uh, KAMR Local 4 News Special Edition. If I want to do that, I simply hit the OK button on my remote and it will bring up this little menu on the bottom. It says Back or More Info. If I click up to More Info and click OK one more time, and you'll notice right up here it says add to library. If I click up here, click OK, show added to your library. We'll record upcoming episodes as they become available. That is now going to be recorded. It's that easy to set it for a recording. Now one of the nice things about YouTube TV as well is even though you don't have channel numbers, what you can do is you can go into your, into your program either on your phone or on a computer and you can actually set up, or tablet, you can actually set up your, um, your guide any way you want. You can put the channels that you watch the most at the top and put the ones that you never watch at the very bottom or you can even actually delete them off of your channel guide. And then the ones you just sort of watch sometimes, you can put those in the middle. So it's very versatile that way. And uh, people may wonder how many streams you can do as well. Uh, with YouTube TV right now, you can set up as many as three streams. Now what a stream is, is like if we put it in terms of cable TV. Let's say at your house you had three cable boxes. Well, that would be the same as streams. What's really cool about streaming TV, though, is your streams are mobile, okay? Whereas your stream before was tied to your cable box that was hooked to your TV, you can now take that stream with you on a phone, on a computer, on a tablet. So let's say, obviously not many of us are traveling right now, but uh, when things are freed back up and, and we're able to travel more, you can uh, take your tablet or computer or phone with you and you can actually download the app to YouTube TV or really any of these and you can watch it on there. Just to give you an example, here's, here is the tablet and here is the app for YouTube TV. If I click on that, 
it's going to bring up the same look. This is the home page. If I go over to live TV and there is my guide, I can also go over to the other side to library, which we'll show you here in a bit. This is where all your recorded items are. So you can even watch your recorded shows on that. Like I said, you could do that on a, on a tablet, but you can also do that on a phone, on a computer. So basically you still have three live streams that you can run at the same time, but they're actually will become mobile now instead of being hooked and, and chained to that uh, cable box. Now, if we go back up to the top and we go over to library. Library is where it's gonna, we're going to have all of the content that we have uh, recorded. If I click down here on the menu, new to your library, this means these are shows that were probably recorded today, just like uh, the price is right down here. You can see there's 20 episodes that would probably be listed on there because it, it had one recorded today. If you come down here to scheduled, you can see at the top line, see the live. These are two shows that are actually being recorded right now. Okay. And also I can go down here later today and it will show the different shows that are upcoming that are scheduled to be recorded. And then I can look later in the week, tomorrow, and then even the next day and, and on beyond that as well. I can look at it by categories of shows. It also has a place down here for just the movies that we've recorded. So I can click on these and watch them anytime I like. Also, sports. You can look up a particular, you can set up a team that you like, whether it's a, you know, football, basketball, baseball, whatever sports you like, you can click on that. And of course, right now, with uh, really no sports going on, but I can go back here and it shows that here's uh, the Oklahoma City Thunder uh, when they played the Boston Celtics four weeks ago. I can go back and click on that and watch uh, that recording of that game. If I click down here where it says completed, you'll notice right here these little dashes right here. If I go up to the top, it says show all scores for this team. If I click here and I go back to that same place, it'll show those scores. But if I'm somebody who wants to go back and watch that and you're avoiding any human contact so that you can make sure that you... Uh, uh, even though you can't watch it live, want to watch it later without uh, knowing the score, you can do it that way. So uh, you, can, you can add your sports teams here and put them out. There's also a place down here below for events. Um, of course, ball games fit into that, but also kind of one-time shows, like if you were somebody who really liked the award shows, uh, like the Grammys or something like that, it would list them in that category. But that's how library works in YouTube TV. Now we go back up the top. There's also this little magnifying glass that I've just highlighted right here. That is your search. Okay. Now in search, like it gives you an example there for action movies. You can actually type that in and it'll bring up uh, different different movies that fit into that category. You can put in the name of a channel and it will link you up to, with that. You can put in the name of an actor or an actress and you can find that as well that way. So search is just a place you can, you can hunt for pretty much anything there. If there's a certain, if you like uh, hunting shows or something like that, you can put hunting and fishing in there and find it that way. And this last icon over here uh, is really your settings is what it is. When we click on it, <clears throat> it'll show your, your um, account information. You can go in here to settings. It's got billing information. If I click on here, you can see it's showing 
the path, the, how, how we pay for that, but also um, uh, when that next bill is due and how much, is it, how much it's going to be. Uh, that's where you'd have to go onto your computer also, uh, having a login and a password uh, so that, you know, a credit card doesn't have a, 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 a never-ending life to it. It has about a five-year life, and so that's how you're going to have to pay for it is through a credit card that's going to bill you every month. So you'll have to know how to do that to go in to change that uh, when, before your credit card expires. You can actually set it up where you have a backup one in case there is a problem with one as well. There's the live guide. Like, it said, like I said, you have to go to tv.youtube.com to adjust that. But like we said, you can change the live guide around. Uh, YouTube TV did add this here recently also, the filter. And what it does is it allows you to set uh, this filter to where it only allows TVY, TVG, G, and PG only shows. So uh, you can turn that on and what it will do is you can set up a code, to, like a four digit code to where uh, only those shows come on without putting a code in. If you've got especially younger children in your home and you want to uh, protect them from seeing things that you don't want them to see. So that's really how uh, YouTube TV YouTube TV works. Now if we click the this is I don't know if you'd seen this I didn't show this to you but this is the remote for a Roku TV, you can see not a ton of buttons on it. The ones you're going to use the most, these are your arrows here. This is the OK button. This one is the Home button. It always takes you back to that main screen. And you've also got the arrow key here that takes you back to the previous screen. And those are the ones you're going to use the most. It does have a pause, play and pause, and the fast forward and uh, reverse as well there. It's also got a little star or asterisk button that brings up a separate menu. And then also this is kind of a skip back button of about 30 seconds is what that is. But the, a lot of those, uh, when you're going backwards and forwards, that's, you can fast forward through your recordings um, if you're wanting to see just a part or skip over commercials. Now where there's on-demand content available, which is slightly different, it means like, Let's say there's a movie coming on at 7 o'clock tonight and you're going to be busy doing something else, but you've got time to watch it right now. If you watch it on demand, uh, they do make that content available, but it also means that you will uh, probably won't be able to skip over the commercials on that. You will have to, usually that's the difference between on demand and recorded. Okay, now I'm going to hit the home button to come back out to the main menu. I know one of the questions that comes up quite a bit uh, with people who have had our TV is how can I get Oklahoma City channels? Well, unfortunately, there's really not a way for you to uh, get that on your regular TV uh, through streaming TV. The only way that uh, PTCI was able to put that on their ca our cable system was because Laverne is outside of uh, the Oklahoma Panhandle and actually in the Oklahoma City viewing area. So that is considered their local area. So we were able to uh, bring that into our entire coverage area. But one way you can get the Oklahoma City channels through here for free is this app right here that is available on Roku and also on Apple TV called News On. And News On, it has nothing but the local news on it. And it's going to have local news from all, you can get it from literally all over the country. You can see when we first pull it up, it's going to bring up the local channels. It's got Amarillo cha News Channel 10 that pops up. There's ABC 7. And so it's got some of these local channels. Here's one of the Oklahoma City channels available, KOKH, Fox 25. There is also 
KOCO Channel 5 out of Oklahoma City. Those are the only two that are available right now that are um, from Oklahoma City. You can also list your favorites. As you can see that line right up here, we've got KOCO, we've got uh, uh, the ABC affiliate out of Dallas as well listed there too. It also has a line for nearby other nearby local stations like Lubbock, Wichita, Tulsa. And you can basically add any channel you want to any local, to, to your list of favorites. You know, we're going to click on here on this Oklahoma City channel right here. Now, what will come up immediately, almost all the time, is you'll see right here it says add one of one. Okay. So that's how they make it free, is they do have some advertising on it. Every once in a while, it is possible that it may interrupt the newscast uh, with a commercial. But when it does come back, it comes back about three to five seconds uh, before you went to commercial. So you don't miss anything, it's just a little bit behind when you do that. Now, if the news is live at that time, it will, it will play it live. If it's not live right then, it's going to show you the most recent newscast. So let's say we're early in the afternoon. If the channel has a noon newscast, that's what would be on right now. If it doesn't have a noon newscast, it would show you the one that was earlier this morning. And we'll back out of there. Let me go back up here. Now I'm going to click on uh, KOCO and list in my favorites. And what I meant by live, of course, you can see on theirs it says live, but actually the live broadcast of this would be right here. You can see previous. It's saying previous newscast. Now, you'll see right here it says remove from favorites. If I click over there, I've taken it off. If I click back over there again, hit OK again, I've just re-added it. So it's back on as one of our favorites. And now I've got that highlighted. So this is the 9 a.m. newscast because they don't have a noon newscast. But this is the way it looked. Now sometimes when you do pull it up after you may have your commercial and then it pops up the newscast, sometimes, especially on KOCO, you'll just see their logo on there. What that means is they're actually in their broadcast commercial break. So uh, if you do, if it does come up and you don't see anything but the logo on there, that's what that is. Now, if you'll look at the line below, it's got previous newscast. And you can see it lists them as the 6 to 7 a.m. Uh, newscast this morning, the 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., the 4.30 to 5, and even last night's 10, 10 o'clock to 11 o'clock Sunday night news. So you can go back and watch old newscasts. There's also down here different clips. Let's say you just wanted to see a particular clip of news that you knew about. Um, you can go back and just watch it by clips as well. And then it mentions other nearby stations below. Now if I click the back arrow, it takes me back to the main page again. And I can go over here to all stations. Okay, it's going to have a line that shows me the closest stations. But then I can move down here and literally get the news from any state in the nation. I want to see the news in Maine. I can click on here. It's got two stations in Bangor, Maine, three in Portland, Auburn, and then one in Presque Isle. So I can literally see news from anywhere here in the United States. As you saw there, there's Hawaii even, and Alaska at the top. So they've got all 50 states on there. But if you do want to watch Oklahoma City news, if you're out here in the Panhandle and all you're getting is Amarillo and you would like to check in on the Oklahoma City news, News On is an app that you would want to add. And like I said, it's a free app. 
So it's not going to cost you anything uh, to be able to watch that. Now, if you want to watch one of the other channels, like Channel 9 uh, there in Oklahoma City or Channel 4, uh, you're probably going to have to go to your computer uh, to do that. You can look up those individual channels, and they'll show you those there. But uh, you can watch on your TV uh, some Oklahoma City news. And now we're going to move over to AT&T TV now. Now, one of the interesting things about this, it's a little bit frustrating. We do have AT&T TV on our Roku TV. Uh, and it's become more popular here lately because like YouTube TV, it has all four local channels out of Amarillo. But... For whatever reason, AT&T TV and Roku TV have not gotten along now. Our app was already on this TV, but if you went out and bought a Roku TV or a Roku stick, you could not download AT&T TV now. You have to have an Amazon Fire TV or Amazon Fire Stick to use this particular app uh, unless you already, they basically grandfathered the people in who already had it but other than that, you have to go use Amazon Fire uh, TV or stick for that. So when we click into to it, we're going to hit, I'm going to hit the down button here, and that brings up my menu this way. Now hit over here to guide, and I can look through my channels. Once again, same thing on the guide. Time across the top, channels here on the far left, and you'll notice these little hearts over here. If I have a favorite channel, if I want to mark this as a favorite, you see I hit the OK button and the little heart uh, filled in. So that would be added to my favorites list there. Now to look at my channel guide, you'll see I moved all the way to the left. It says all, I can move it down to favorites, and that you'll notice that all of them that come up now have the filled in hearts, and that's what your favorite list is, is whatever channels are your favorites, you just mark in that heart, and it's that easy to take them off as well. If I go back over here, now lifetime is removed from that list. If I want to record something later in the day, I got to find this show, Drain the Oceans, and I want to record it. I've moved to it. I click OK, and it brings up, you'll notice record is underlined right here. If I just hit the OK button, recording is set. So it's going to record that show now. If I want to cancel that, you'll notice it says cancel recording. I just simply hit that, recording is canceled. So it's that easy to add or delete a recording that way. Now if I move over to the tab for watch now, the first line it says what's on now. So these are all the shows that are live. It's also telling you how much time is left in each one of these shows as well. This is basically just a different way to look at a guide instead of looking at it uh, by the list of channels, I'm just really looking at it more as the content that's available. You can see as I move, move out here. So it just lists maybe some of the more popular shows that way. Also shows that are trending right now, I can watch them on demand. Uh, right now, and, and you, we've seen this as people are stuck at home with the pandemic, Epix has a free preview available on this. Uh, it's listed in the guide also with Sling right now, as they, they have done the same thing with Sling. And then they have different categories, one for kids, family movies, and premium series. These are from uh, channels like HBO and things like that. You can typically sign up for a free trial that way. 
And I'll back my way back out of there. Now to my library. And these are shows that we have set recordings for. If I click down in here to Lego Masters and bring that up. It's got the different episodes. You can see it tells me the season. Ser season 1, episode 6. So I can go back and watch these episodes because these are ones that have been recorded. You can also set bookmarks for certain shows. Maybe you haven't seen it come up for a while, but when it does come up, you want, uh, you want to know about it and you can actually set a bookmark as well. Discover is really, uh, uh, really where a lot of your on-demand content. Now, AT&T TV uh, has, some, has a device tip, and these little videos, uh, while they're, they are somewhat helpful, um, you'll notice like this remote here in this picture here. AT&T TV actually has a device that you can buy for your home and hook up to your TV, and so... They're really more, these videos are really more geared for that uh, than they are for people using a Roku or Amazon Fire Stick to watch these particular programs. But if we go down here, if we go back up to the top, we can look at it by networks. It's got premium and then all the networks. And what I can do here is, like if I like AMC, I can click on it. And these are all the programs on there that are available typically to watch on demand. Like I can put up, pull up this show Better, Better Call Saul and I can go back and watch on demand these other episodes. Also, if you'll see right here, I've highlighted now where it says season. This is season five. If I click on that, looks like season five is the only one that is available. On some shows you'll have uh, previous seasons that are available as well. Also, movies that are connected with this channel. These are movies that are available on demand that you can watch anytime. Uh, like I said, they're probably going to have commercial breaks, so you will have to sit through the commercial. So you can look for programming. You know, if there's a particular channel you like, um, you can you can check there and see the content that they have av have available. Also on now, it shows that the movie Coach Carter is on right now on AMC. You can look at it by, by genre, like movies here. Like I mentioned, they've got the free epics channels right now. So they've got those movies listed in their own line. And then it's got broken down by other categories, feature action, feature drama, and also, if I go over here to the past this first line, I can put view all, and it'll bring up all the movies that fit into featured drama, okay? And also, there's a category for TV shows as well. First line, what we're watching, these are just popular shows that are out there. Then it's got it broken down by other categories, outdoor and travel, home and kitchen, history and science, uh, docu-series, drama TV. So just all kinds of different categories that are available uh, there in the Discover tab, which is basically you can find the li live content there, but it's also really where your on-demand content is available. You don't have to wait till the show's on. Uh, at a particular time. You can go and watch it whenever you want. AT&T TV also has the little magnifying glass for your search here. You can go down, go down here and that actually mentions by categories some of the stuff we've already put in here. Like um, if I want to see movies that involve Tom well, I put Tom Hanks in there, so it actually brought up a couple other Toms as well. But you can see a couple Tom Hanks movies uh, that are available. It looks like they're available through uh, subscription. Like if I click on this one, 
it actually shows that it's a part it's a stars channel that it's on so I would have to subscribe to that to add that and by the way on your on your computer or on your tablet as well you can that's where you can subscribe to some extras that are available um, like Epix channels or um, uh, there's Fox Soccer Plus if you're a big soccer fan and uh, some other add-ons that you can do to your programming as well so I can put it in you know like I said by name by TV shows you can look up a channel just like um, we've got Showtime right here and I, it'll bring up those those channels and what shows and movies are available on that of course we would have to have a subscription uh, to that there's also settings over here the little gear looking item right here I can set up parental controls here and put content content restrictions on it have to put a code in to do that though like we mentioned a four four digit yeah, it's a little darker here but you can block R-rated movies block TV shows that are TVMA and you can also block unrated programming too which a lot of unrated programming might not necessarily be uh, bad but you may want to be safe better safe than sorry in that situation and I keep hitting the wrong button we'll go back over here to settings this is where you're going to find uh, some of the other information terms and conditions um, and then if I want to look into my account information or or click out of it there that's where I would do that if I need to log out of it but that's really a AT&T TV now and how that one works if I hit the home button and click back out let me check here I haven't seen any questions come up I hope that I'm looking enough to be able to see whether there is or not if you do have any questions like we mentioned please go ahead and send those in okay now we'll go over to sling and sling is you know all of these are going to work relatively the same now when sling comes up it comes up with my TV first it's going to show uh, it's going to list first across here all the channels and what's live on them right now okay and you can actually go in here and edit what your favorite channels are uh, you can also do that in the guide. This one has the little hearts as well. It shows my rec recordings on here. And then it also has a line for the continue watching. You know, if you're watching a show and then you stop it in the middle of it, it'll allow you to go right back and resume it. Uh, it shows things that are trending right now and other things that it recommends as well. We'll go back up to the top if we go into on now this is really just a different way to look at a guide uh, it's got it broken down in categories of news sports kids pro programming that's on right now TV shows and series that are on right now movies and then it just everything that is on as well now if I go over to guide there's actually two ways that you can look at the guide you can look at it as grid or channel we'll go over to grid and grid is maybe what you're more used to the traditional guide once again time across the top channels on the far left 
and you can see the little hearts that you can click over if I want to add that to my favorites. It's not one wanting me to add it that way. I guess I would have to add it in my TV on this one. I can have my grid. You know, it's showing all channels. If I go to my channels, and it just shows those that are those are marked as favorites. If I put it on my channels, I can also this one allows you to do it by categories too. If I want to look up just news channels, it'll show just the news channels. So the guide in Sling will let you do quite a few different things. And we'll put that back on all channels. Now if I look back where it says channel, what it does is it kind of breaks it down as you, you'll see the ABC News highlighted right here. And it's got uh, their content that's available. If I click down here, I can change the channel this way and see what's on live and what's on later. Okay, It's showing me that the movie X-Men Apocalypse is live right now on FX and some of the other programming that's coming up later in the day. And also, here's the line for things that are available on demand. Once again, on demand content, you're going to uh, probably have to sit through the commercials, but you can watch it on demand. You can watch it whenever it's uh, convenient for you to watch. So once again, that's how your guide works. If I want to, if I want to record something, if I want to watch this movie Stripes, if I want to record it, it starts at 3.30. I click the OK button after I've gotten on there and I simply record is highlighted right here. It tells me a little bit about it. If I hit record, it is you'll notice it says scheduled to record now. I just hit that to cancel the recording as well. So that's set to record and you can see the little dot right here. Now if it was recording right now, if you were going through the guide, instead of being white, that little dot would be red. It also has it broken down by categories uh, in sports. Got what's on right now, different sport movies. And of course, that's a lot of the sports that are on right now are just movies or information like that. Uh, here's a category for football, whether it's movies or they're showing old ball games right now. But whatever category you like, you can look through it. You can find it on there. Also, it does have a tab just for on demand. Kind of breaks it down by categories. Last, last night's episodes, different shows uh, that were on. And then these, will, these kind of categories will change every month. But uh, whatever movies that are available, like it says hit movies, whatever are, ava are available on the channels that you have, that you're subscribing to, uh, these movies don't cost more. They're just uh, making them available. Let's say that this movie, uh, let's say... The Expendables here is on TBS. Well, TBS is just making the, the making it available for you to watch it now instead of having to wait when it comes on uh, whatever night of the week. And so they're just breaking it down into categories. But you're already paying for these. You're just able to watch them when you would like instead of having to wait until when they come on TV in On Demand. Now, Sling does have a rent category, and you'll see recently released movies like 1917 was just out of the theaters. Uh, I imagine there's some places that it's, if the theaters were open, it would still be in. But uh, other movies that are recently released, you can watch them, you can rent them. This is also a place if you're somebody who's interested in boxing, uh, matches 
or uh, some professional wrestling pay-per-view events, uh, they would be available on here that way. But um, they've got they've just got categories of movies that you, you that you can rent to watch and uh, at your leisure. Once again, magnifying glass. This is where you can put in shows, movies, channels, actors, actresses, uh, and you can search for pretty much anything you want uh, want to, and it'll bring up. Uh, shows and movies that fit into that category. It also has the little gear over here, which is your settings. They were one of the, a sling was one of the first ones. You can set your closed captioning information here, but they were one of the first ones to have parental controls. You can see that we can flip this over to on and it will block anything that's unrated, not rated, Rated R, NC-17, TVMA, or making purchases. As we mentioned, this one does have the rent where you can rent things. So, uh, And you can set those to whatever, whatever you want. You just have to put your four-digit code in to do that. But I can, you can actually block everything all the way down to leaving only the G-rated stuff available. You know, if you have a TV that's maybe in a... A child's room or anything like that and you want to block any content other than that you can do that and there's just a few other items in here as well showing what kind of connection you want typically if you're on PTCI's uh, fiber optic you're going to want to leave it at best quality if you do have a lower end it you, you may have to set it at, at a lower level support, uh, also your device, as we mentioned, closed caption, and also uh, DVR information here as well. And that is Sling. Now, we do not have subscriptions to Hulu with Live TV uh, or Philo or Fubo TV. Uh, just to say a couple things about those, Hulu with Live TV, uh, like YouTube TV and AT&T TV now, uh, all, have all four of the local channels out of Amarillo. So, and Hulu with Live TV is one that we have heard uh, a lot of good compliments about. Um, the reason that we don't subscribe to it to show people it is because they do have uh, where they only allow four IP address changes a year. And since... Until now, we were marching all over the Panhandle and into the Texas Panhandle doing these streaming workshops. We were changing our IP address uh, four times in a month. So it uh, wasn't one we could really keep. Philo is an interesting one that it has over, has almost 60 channels to it. And I believe it's right at 20 or $25. And... Um, the reason it's that low is because it has no local channels and it has no live sports and those are the two most expensive items out there as far as channels go. But if you don't care about local news or you want to watch it on your computer and you don't care about live sports, Philo, P-H-I-L-O might be one you want to consider. Now Fubo TV is a little more sports centric. So if you are somebody who, who's big into sports, you may want to check that one out. Now, if you're not sure which one you want to switch over to, there is a couple of websites you may want to look at. One is called the, thestreamable.tv. And what you can do is you can go there and you can put in the channel's that are important to you and it can show you what streaming services might fit your TV viewing the best. And I I did mess up that is the streamable.com is actually what that one is called. 
but you can go to that website and uh, they've got lists of all the different streaming services and which one might fit you. And of course, you can go, if you just look up YouTube TV, they're going to tell you exactly what channels they have because they want you to be able to go to their service and, and use it. So you'll want to be able to, to look there and see if you can find which ones fit you. Now, I will show you too, if you are a big sports fan, one of the services you may want to look into is ESPN has an app and they have a service on it called ESPN Plus. ESPN Plus, you cannot, you cannot get it on your cable subscription anywhere. You cannot buy it with a satellite package. The only place you can get it is by streaming it through their app. That's it. We'll go up here to the tab for ESPN Plus. And you can see it's $4.99 a month. Okay, and you're going to get all kinds of exclusive content with that. Uh, there's different shows and programming that's available on there. Uh, all of the 30 for 30 documentary series are on there. Uh, if you're big into mixed martial arts, MMA, UFC has their programming on there. And if you want to um, watch their pay-per-view events, uh, you can actually buy them through ESPN Plus as well. If you're a Big 12 fan, let's say you're an Oklahoma State fan. Of course, right now, there's not a lot of that going on, but um, they do have a lot of exclusive content on here. But the Big 12 signed an agreement with ESPN Plus, and there's a lot of ball games that are normally on here. Uh, mentioned Oklahoma State. Oklahoma State Roundup, that's just a show uh, that uh, has, goes into Oklahoma State sports. Uh, normally, what you would see if sports were taking place right now, you, you might see an OSU baseball game. Like, so, say they're playing the University of Kansas in baseball. Uh, there's a good chance that it would be on ESPN+. Plus. Um, there were basketball games this year in the Big 12 that were on this. So if you're a Big 12 fan or a fan of a particular team uh, in the Big 12, uh, ESPN Plus may be a service that you want to look into. Um, now, you won't see as much content for the University of Texas because they have the Longhorn Network. So that's where their third tier rights are. And the University of Oklahoma has an agreement with Fox, Fox Sports. So their content is typically found on Fox Sports Go, another app. But you will st still see their content on here from time to time. Also on, on this ESPN app, if we go back up to the top, if you do have a subscription, let's say you bought YouTube TV or one of the others, um, you can actually watch that content on this app as well. You would have to log in, but uh, these are all the live shows that are on right now. ESPN, ESPN2, uh, ESPN3 is there. Uh, that's also something that has to be subscribed to, but that's just online uh, streaming content as well. ESPN News, the Will Cain show is on right now. Uh, also, what you can see, like during football season, let's say it's a Saturday during the college football year, if there's a game on ABC, you will see an ESPN3 uh, channel that will be showing that game as well because uh, ESPN and ABC are both under the Disney umbrella, so that content is available here. Uh, there's also on-demand content that's available uh, top, there's some top videos, but if you go down here, um, like shows, documentary series like, like uh, E60 and things like that, you can watch those. Uh, but there is a lot of content available on ESPN Plus that may be something as a sports fan uh, you may want to add. 
Here's the Fox Sports Go that I mentioned. Um, and there's not a whole lot on it, it right now. It's more the regional stuff, but you can see OU Sooner Sports TV featured OU Crimson Classics, a softball game from 2013. So if you are uh, a Sooner fan, there is some different stuff that, uh, that is available on this app. But as long as you show that you have a subscription to the cable provider that has any of these, uh, which any of these streaming cable replacements will work for that. Also, there, on any of these services, there is a lot of free content available as well. Like we go to Roku channel here. And Roku channel is something that just comes free when you buy the device or you buy the TV. And there's going to be different TV shows and different movies. Um, that, the Lego Movie 2, that's not a very old movie. It's from uh, 2019 that's already available. Of course, this one is hooked to the HBO uh, to HBO, it's, you'd be, you would sign up for a, like a seven-day free trial. But there are a lot of movies that are available as well that are a little bit older than that, older than that, that are available without signing up for any kind of uh, trial or anything like that. As we look through here, you know, Good Morning America, or Good Morning Vietnam, and then also uh, there's different TV shows and series that are available that way. And this content changes every month. There's also um, news that's available. You can see this Weather Nation right here. There's also uh, ABC News Live, their national feed news is all the time. Uh, Newsmax TV, which is more of a, a conservative news outlet, uh, has live on all the time. But there's just all kinds of different genres of movies that are available documentaries, music programming, um, and different things like that. Like, like right here, it's got family movies that are available as well. So, and all of that is available for free. Everything on Roku channel is free. Uh, some of them, if it's premium content, it does require a trial subscription. Still don't see that there are any questions that are out there. It, let me show you how to, we will go down on the Roku and show you how that you can add a streaming channel or delete one. I'm just moving my down arrows here down to streaming channels. I'll click OK. Okay. Let's say that you're a big fan of Hallmark Movies. So you want this Hallmark Movies Now app. If I click OK, now it says go to channel. Well, that's one that we've already added. So <laughs> excuse me. We'll go down here. Let's go down here to search channels. And we'll look for, as we've already put it in here, Friendly, which is a $5.99 subscription. It has... Uh, local fam uh, live family friendly TV. It has the Hallmark Channel. It has Game Show Network, the Weather Channel, Outdoor Channel. Okay. If I want to add this, you'll see Add Channel is highlighted. I cl simply click OK, and it will download that channel. It'll take just a minute. Friendly TV has been added to the end of your home. To move to it, highlight it and press the star. If I click OK, I can go, go to channel now. And of course, we don't have a subscription, so it's going to say watch free for seven days. Or if I do have one, I can sign in there. Okay, I'm going to hit the home button, come back out, and then I'm going to show you where it is right here. It's at the bottom of our list. But if I hit the star or the asterisk button, as I mentioned, that's this one right here. 
like on your phone, I always called it the star. If I hit that button, it brings up a little menu. And I can, if this is the app that I want to use now for watching TV for the most part, I can go to move channel. And you can see right here, there's an arrow pointing up. If I click up and over, now you can see I can go in any direction. But let's say this is the one that I want to watch most of the time now. I can move it all the way up here to the front. I'll click OK. Now there it is. If I hit home, that's where it's going to be. So I can move any of these around however I would like. Now if I want to remove that, I hit the star button again after I've highlighted it. I go in here to remove channel. And then it's going to ask me, it says, are you sure you want to remove Friendly TV? And it makes me even move the cursor up to highlight remove. And there it is, it's gone. So it's that easy to add and that easy to move or to take to remove it from your Roku channel uh, menu. Roku also has free featured free is always a good place to look if you're looking for different content that's available. This is going to kind of combine those things like it says this ABC News we mentioned live that's on Roku channel. But you can it'll send you to different apps and shows you what is available for free. And this should also include the, the items that you have uh, on your whatever, whichever one that you decide to su subscribe to. And like we said earlier, you know, when it comes to whether you decide to go with YouTube TV or you go with AT&T TV Now or Hulu with Live TV, that's going to depend on what you like to watch. They all are going to have some channels that are the same. They're going to have some that are different. You're not going to want to pay for more than one cable replacement app. Those are going to be your main TV providers. But then you may want to add in uh, one that's a little less, like we mentioned ESPN Plus. Or maybe you want to add in, maybe you like one of them that doesn't have a Hallmark channel, but you want to add in uh, an app that has the Hallmark channels available for another five bucks or so. But you wouldn't want to buy Sling and YouTube TV because most of your channels are going to overlap and you'll be paying for the same thing in most categories in that way. Also, uh, back to the sports thing, we mentioned Fox Sports Go. There is one for Fox Sports. And you can watch any channels that you have set up through your others here as well. It's going to give you the... It's been a while since we've been on that app, but if I go up here to the top to TV schedule, it'll show you all the channels you can even watch the local K KCIT. And what I kind of like about watching a ball game on here is it, that uh, you don't have a weather map covering up part of your screen over here. Uh, and it doesn't get interrupted. Let's say, you know, if there's uh, a news event, may interrupt a sporting event. Uh, a couple years ago, an OU game, the start of it was interrupted by John McCain's funeral procession. I didn't know about it until I came into work on Monday because I watched it on the Fox Sports app. But any channels that you have a subscription to, it's going to show on here that are related to sports and you can watch them on there. So Fox Sports and that, like I said, that app is free. It's just going to, you're going to have to have a subscription to either satellite or one of these streaming services to be able to watch it. Now, if you are new to streaming, and if you're checking this out for the first time, or you're just not sure about a lot of this, PTCI does offer a couple of services that may be very important for you to check out. Streaming Care is one of our services, and it's only $3.50 a month. And what Streaming Care is, if you called in and said, hey, I heard him talking about the streaming care. I'm switching over. I'm streaming my TV now. I want to do that. 
but I'm not sure how to do that. And you'd like to, you tell them you'd like to sign up for streaming care. And then when they sign you up, you can ask for an appointment for one of our guys to come set that up at your house. So they can set up your, uh, if you were to buy a Roku stick or an Amazon Fire stick uh, or Apple TV or Google Chromecast, they can actually come out to your house and help you set it up. Okay. Also, after it's set up, if you have any problems, they're going to give you a phone number that you can call in. They'll try to fix it over the phone. If they can't, then they can come back out to your house and do that. Now, of course, during this time of a pandemic that we're trying to, we're trying to keep people out of other people's homes. And if you have been sick or anything like that, obviously our guys are not going to come to your house right now. We're going to take precautions, not only protect our customers, but also to protect our employees as well. Now, if you also go to our PTCI YouTube channel and you may be watching on there, we did make some streaming videos to help try to help navigate some of that as well, but we can help you with that. But streaming care can take care of the hassle of trying to set this up. Also something, if you're not very internet savvy, you may want to consider is PTCI's whole home Wi-Fi or Whole Home Wi-Fi Plus. Those are two services that we offer. Whole Home Wi-Fi is right at $10 a month. Uh, Whole Home Wi-Fi Plus is seven, right at $17 a month. With Whole Home Wi-Fi, what we do is we provide you with a router. A router is what you would plug into your, uh, your internet connection that comes into your house. If you're going to use a Roku TV or a Roku stick or really any of these devices, most of them you do not have a direct line. You're going to use wireless internet. For that, you're going to have to have a router. Well, you can go and buy one or you can leave that to PTCI. We're going to, we can leave you with a top-notch router. The great thing about that is a couple things. That router is basically a computer that does, uh, has a specific job. It can be hacked just like a computer can be hacked or anything else. So if what we do with that is because that is that wireless, that router is on our network, we can remotely update the firmware on it. And updating the firmware does two things. First, it updates the security on it as hackers are always finding new ways into things. So it helps to protect the network that way. But also, just like any road out there, it, it gets bumps on it and gets potholes and things like that. When the firmware, when you update the firmware, it comes in there and it smooths out the pot, smooths the road back out so that you're able to use your internet connection at an optimal level. Uh, we know from, that from studies show that when people have slow internet at their house or, it, or at a business, over 50% of the time it's related to an outdated router or a router that hasn't had its firmware updated on a regular basis. So that may be something you want to consider. Whole Home Wi-Fi. Now, Whole Home Wi-Fi Plus has a couple other items that are added to it as well as what we just mentioned. It has 24-7, 365 days a year US-based tech support. It has Wi-Fi support for, with an assessment app. It has setup support, troubleshooting, and more. And also contain, uh, includes Protect plus security suites on four computers or mobile devices as well. So you could use it to protect your cell phones and tablets and laptops as well. It also has a thing called Password Genie that helps with keeping your passwords in a safe place and in a place where if you forget it, you can still get to it. So those are two services that PTCI does offer that can kind of help to make this a little bit easier as well. 
If you do have any questions about what we've talked about here today, please feel free to let us know. We'll be happy to answer any of those. And I still don't see that there are any questions that have been sent in. And, um, you know, if, we, if there aren't any other questions that are out there, uh, just going back over a couple things as I go over this uh, guide that we have for a lot of our streaming workshop. Uh, as I mentioned, you can look up the websites. If you want to know wh exactly what channels Sling or YouTube TV, Hulu with Live TV, Fubo, any of those are, just uh, you can look those up and their websites will show you exactly what they have. Uh, you'll want to make sure that uh, it has the number of streams allowed. YouTube TV has three. Hulu with Live has two, but you can pay for more. Fubo TV has three per account. AT&T TV has two, but you can pay for more there as well. Sling has one to four. They have two different packages, uh, what they call orange and also blue. And I believe orange is only one stream, but... Um, Blue can get up to four. Philo allows up to three streams. And what that means is just what you can watch live at one time. Each of them, uh, when, they, when we started out with these, not all of them had recording, had DVRs, but they all do have a cloud DVR. And I will explain to you, you don't have to buy a, a, a DVR machine like a TiVo or anything. It, it uses what's called cloud DVR, which is, it just stores it on a server somewhere else. Uh, but all of these have the ability to record. When it comes to pay-per-view, really Sling is the only one that has any pay-per-view content. Uh, parental controls, as we showed you, to some extent, they're, they're pretty much available on all of them, and that's a pretty recent... Uh, addition. And then if you are looking for uh, Spanish language TV, uh, most of them have that as well. I think Philo is about the only one that doesn't have uh, Spanish language options as well. Now, I will say when it comes to if you're going to stream TV, we do mention uh, uh, 20 meg internet is really the least you can do. But if you're going to do 20 meg internet, really um, you'd have to have no more than one TV running on that at a time. We suggest that people either go to 50 or 100 um, because they typically are going to have more than one TV. They're going to have computers and also um, smartphones going as well or tablets so you may need to look at your use if you do go to PTCI's website just ptci.net there's a little uh, place on there that you'll see a rocket ship on our main page towards the top called Internet Calculator, what speed do I need? If you hit that button that says, let's get started, it's going to ask you just a few questions, take you about five minutes. They're multiple answer questions, but will not take you very long to take it. Here, I'll try to bring it out there, but if you can see right there where it says, let's get started. So you can go there, and I think it's a whole three questions but multiple answers and it basically finds out how much internet you're using and what speed would be right for you. And I will tell you this, our department was in charge of putting that calculator together and when it was first put together we thought it kicked people to too high of a speed and so we had it 
measured down some. So we believe it is a very honest um, uh, program questionnaire that tells you exactly what kind of speed you're going to need. Um, a lot of people don't realize that they may be using more than they think they are because if you have a security system at your house that's wireless, that's using internet. If you see these doorbells uh, called ring doorbell, at your, if you have one of those at your house where you can look on your phone and speak to the person that's at the door, that's using internet access. And so typically there are more items than, than we realize sometimes. These new uh, Nest uh, thermometers where you can change the temperature on your phone um, without having to get up or you can, you know, turn the heat on two hours before you get home during the cold of the winter. Um, that uses internet access to do those things. There's even door locks now that you can lock remotely and unlock remotely. So those are all using internet access and just like uh, a road out, the, the road that runs right through the main street of Guymon, that works for Guymon, but if we put that uh, in Oklahoma City, that might not work because it might not have enough lanes of traffic. Well, your internet's the same way. You may have to have more lanes of internet, which 50 meg is more lanes of internet uh, than 20, and 100 is more than 50. Uh, you may have to have more depending on the number of devices you use. And I think that's really it. If anybody has any other questions, we'd be happy to take them. You can always call into our office and try to there. I guess we did have, we have a couple of questions here. Maybe, can you get local channels with Roku? Okay, well how that would work is that we mentioned when it comes to one of the, the cable replacement apps. YouTube TV, you can get the Amarillo stations. None of these we can get Oklahoma City because we're outside of their area. You cannot with AT&T TV, you cannot with Sling TV. The other two that you can besides YouTube TV is I just said AT&T TV, no, you couldn't. That's actually one of them you can, I apologize. Uh, then also, Hulu with live TV also has four of the, all four of the local channels as well. So those three, YouTube TV, AT&T TV now, and Hulu with live TV. Those are the ones that you can get local channels on. And what advantage is there to having a Roku TV over a Roku stick? I would say there really isn't one other than um, there, there really isn't much of a difference. Uh, I guess the Roku TV kind of simplifies things because this is your remote for everything then. And you can still use this TV to um, see it's still got other HDMI plugs. You could still hook an antenna to it. It's also got the audio visual there as well. So you could hook a Blu-ray player or a DVD player to it. Um, it still has that capability as well. Um, you can even if, if you wanted to get a Roku TV and you wanted to stick an Amazon Fire Stick in the back of it and put it in the HDMI 2 plug, you could do that. So I don't know that there's an advantage over one over the other. Uh, they both would do perfectly fine uh, streaming TV, that's for sure. Any other questions out there?
Would parental controls need to be enabled and disabled for each viewer? Uh, you can go in and set up separate profiles in each of these. That is something that you can do. So you can even s switch around to different TVs. Um, like I said, if, you had, if your child had one in their bedroom, uh, you may want to set up their profile uh, to where it can only get uh, certain, certain things viewed on it like uh, TVG or a PG rating, or whatever you would decide there. But yes, you can set those up separately in the parental controls of these different devices or different uh, apps for that. You can, uh, if, you're, if you're using a smart TV, I will tell you this, that uh, some people ask, well, what about the apps on my smart TV? Unless your uh, TV is absolutely brand new, it probably does not have a cable replacement app on it. There are some TVs coming out with uh, some of those already built into them, but they are absolutely brand new TVs that that, that is happening with. Uh, the others, you, like you may have YouTube that comes up or you may have Hulu that, that you can have on there, but it, those are different than the cable replacement apps. Like I mentioned earlier, YouTube and YouTube TV are two different things. Hulu and Hulu with live TV are two different things. Uh, they probably could have helped us out by not naming them the same, but they did, so we have to deal with it. But if you use your smart TV to get to Netflix or to get to YouTube or, uh, maybe even Prime Video if you have a um, uh, Amazon Prime account. Uh, you can actually use the apps and go, th go to it through your Roku TV. Uh, I did mention, you, you mentioned about the difference between a Roku TV and a Roku stick. There, for a while there, you had to turn on your TV or use your volume on your TV remote. But now Roku has come out with Roku sticks that the remotes that come with them actually have, uh, you can turn your TV off and on with them and also uh, change the volume as well. So they have even upgraded that. And it'll just continually get better. I mean, they're, they're continually trying to improve it. And if there's not any other questions, I think we've pretty much covered it all here. Well, we thank all of you that jumped on to watch this. If anybody you know has questions or says that they missed that, uh, let them know that this will be on our PTCI's YouTube channel. And you can always find it archived there. And we'll also be another, doing another one live here in two weeks. Uh, on Monday, two weeks from today, from 2 to 4 again. So if there are other questions, or if anybody missed, if you know of anybody who missed it but wants to check into one of our live one and ask questions, tell them to join us uh, two weeks from now on Monday. So I think that's it for today. Uh, God bless everybody out there. Have a happy Easter. <music>